So here we go, back down to the lake. Got myself, Mr. Ed, working class woodsman. So he's gonna show us how to set up a cusk line. Certainly new to me. Maybe new to some of you, maybe not, but. Or in some parts of the world known as burbot. Burbot. Burbot, yep. Yeah, I've, I've seen a video with uh, Ray Mears on that. Yeah. Yeah, he, he said, uh, I think it was five burbot sets, and he was actually successful on all five sets. Yep. So. Uh, strictly cold water fish. Yeah. Uh, arguably one of the best tasting freshwater fishes in the world. Yeah, they look pretty ugly, but yeah. Ray said the same thing, they're pretty good tasting. Phenomenal, they almost have the same uh, texture as haddock. Haddock, love haddock. Yeah, they're a strictly cold water fish. You won't catch them above 48 degrees. Okay. They yep. Whereas they hibernate in the warm water and the uh, hornpout or catfish hibernate in the cold water. So it's kind of reverse case scenario, but the- Right on. Very good, phenomenal fish to eat. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Looking forward to this. Lines and show you guys what that's all about. As my buddy had mentioned, not just similar to Burbit, which uh, is almost wiped out right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Burbit, just like I've seen a video with where Ray Mears has uh, set five different lines for Burbit, and he was successful on all five. Great video. Uh, maybe I'll throw that in the description block uh, in case you guys haven't seen that you can check it out really good video as are all of Ray's what's that gonna adjust the carburetor on this there it is. like I said in the last video that's my buddy Ed and he'll never tell you and, and typically that's the way it goes with uh, you know, woodsmen that have been doing it for a long time. Like, they don't pat themselves on the back. It's not about woodcraft, bushcraft, or any of that crap. They just come out here and do their thing, and they, they don't care nonetheless about what anyone else is doing. And here's, like I said, a perfect example of that. And uh, happy to call Ed my friend, you know. So hole one. We're about to get the down and dirty on a cusk line and what that actually means, what we're actually fishing for, and how we do that. So, it, the floor or the ice is yours, Ed. Uh, the whole deal with cusk, um, uh, probably we talked about earlier, really good eating fish. Yep. Cold water fish. Uh, the best place to find them, honestly, is rocky points. And, uh, when the ice first comes in, now they spawn in a very early time of the year. So when the ice first comes in, shallow water is good, yep. rocky, uh, they feed on crayfish, uh, bugs, anything that like hides in the rock. So if you can find a rocky point, that's a good place to find them. Um, now, you can hear the, hear ice, the ice, yeah, Oops. that's awesome. Well, that one got away. Well, we're, um, fe we're feeding the fish. <laughs> Uh, you gotta, you know, all right, here we got another one. Uh, essentially, the only rules to it, now we're in New Hampshire, so I'm not, I have to, we, we're abiding by New Hampshire's rules. Right on. But essentially, you've got a one ounce weight that you can see. That weight has to be touching the bottom, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And you can't have more than a six inch leader off that weight. Okay. You can, however, use dead or live bait. I prefer big Arkansas shiners. Works 
the best. So what you do, put your shiner on and you simply lower it down until you find the bottom. Again, we're probably fishing in about 15 feet of water here. Yeah. So when you find the bottom, maybe I'm in 20 feet of water. See, we found the bottom? Yep. Once you find that, you give it a couple of wraps, like that. So you want to be maybe a foot, foot and a half off the bottom? No, the weight has, the to, weight has to be on the bottom. bottom. And right. you just leave some slack. Like for instance, that's the bottom right there. Yeah. That's tight. So now I know, right now I've got slack. Okay. So I set that. And on your cusk trap, which is no, nothing more than a piece of stick with string wound around it, you need your name and address in the state you live in. Other awesome. than that, and check it every 24 hours. Uh, and that could be, you could check it at 2 in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the morning, doesn't matter. As long as it's tended every 24 hours, you're within the, uh, the rules of cusk fishing. And on this particular lake, or actually any lake, I think, you can use up to six traps. So I've got six traps all rigged, and uh, we're going to set all six traps, and hopefully by the morning we'll have a couple of cusk and we can make a, a chowder. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff, man. So, it is good stuff. All right, so just because we've mentioned it, and that's kind of the point of the video, uh, my buddy here is gonna talk to us a little bit about what a cusk actually is because a lot of people probably don't know what that means so the, the ice again Ed is yours so oh. a cusk what what does that mean what type of fish is that well it's uh it's also uh, you've probably seen other videos uh, known as a burbot, burbot. Um, as far as I know and based on some pretty good evidence it's uh, basically a cross between an eel and a hornpout Okay. Um, so horn pout, catfish, that yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In um, an eel, that's why the tail looks like a an eel and the, the head looks like a horn pout. Okay. Um, now I don't have any scientific proof to, uh, to prove that, but I've been told by many, many, many people that that's that's how it actually uh, what it what what it is. Is it like a hybrid? It's a hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Like a splake. Have you ever heard of those? Yep, spikes. Yep. Yeah, that's like a salmon and a lake trout. Right. When they uh, when they somehow cross somehow breeded and, and uh, uh, became a spike. Right on. So now I don't know. I don't have it. As I said, I don't have scientific proof to uh, back that up. But right. And so what? What's their habitat, if you will, for lack of better words? Like where are you, where are you going to find a cusk fish? A cusk. Generally, first of all, the water wants to be below 48 degrees, and second of all, um, the best place to find them is rocky, rocky points or rocky shorelines because they feed on crayfish, bugs, or things that hide under the rocks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you can find a rocky point or any anything that contains, if you think you know where the crayfish are holding out, chances are there's going to be predator fish there. Crayfish, you can tell he's a New Englander, right? We don't we don't call him we don't call him crawdads up in this part. Oh, I love up in these parts. And I eat crayfish. But, uh, <laughs> love crawdads and eat yeah. crayfish. That's like you just threw me for a loop. <laughs> but yeah, so we're not far from the shore, and like we're, Ed's saying, we're the, about the, twenty feet of water. Twenty yeah. feet of water. Yep. There's definitely some rocks, and you can kind of tell by the snow on top of the ice here that it, it freezes first it stays colder that's why you still have the snow over here and out out that way uh, there's less of it it's deeper water uh, it takes a lot longer to freeze over and uh, yeah, well, you know I'm not a scientist but <laughs> we get out past that there's, that island, there's a sled literally an inch and a half of ice yeah we were way out there we we're heading out there on on the last video kinda out that way and it was not so safe so we had probably an inch and a half of ice and uh, we stopped made our way back to the smaller island uh, which is right there yeah that's actually three sis uh, sisters island right there three sisters or no sisters sisters yeah. okay 
Um, I was thinking about Shakura when I said three sixty. Uh, <laughs> right on. But literally, it was an inch and a half thick, so we decided common sense being the better part of valor, we wouldn't. Uh, right. Assume. When you, when you do like one thump into the ice with it's your uh, ice enough. chisel and it goes through, I'm good. On the good bad scale, as my buddy side. Tim would say. <laughs> right. Not so good. Yeah. <laughs> So right on, man. All right, we'll set the rest of our traps, and hopefully uh, by tomorrow we'll have enough for a chowder. Right on. All right, so you, you've got that, the cusp trap there, Ed, and yep. uh, kind of looks like a big netting needle of sorts, so or shipping needle. Can, can you de uh, describe that for us? Yeah, actually, uh, if you've ever seen how people sew nets, Yep. Or, or the old uh, Laplanders or Norwegians right. used to use a wooden needle and okay. they would sew their nets. Right. Kind of the same concept and, and honestly I, I pretty much think that's where this this uh, is probably derived but all it is is a piece, it's a stick of wood about a three-eighths of an inch thick with notches cut in each end it can be of any type of wood and you wrap about a hundred feet of line around it depending on you know so you can fish up to a hundred feet of water and, uh, and and then a one ounce weight is tied to the end. Uh, in, a, in an old a trick that I learned a long time ago is you take an elastic band, this is how you tend your traps, if you take an elast a rubber band and hook it around the hook like this, because this is the, uh, the actual setup, you got a one ounce weight, yep. and again in New Hampshire you can only have six inches of leader off that weight. Awesome. So, it's in a sense, this is on the bottom, and your bait is up here. But what you do is you take a, a rubber band like that, and you keep wrapping it around, uh, like this, like this, and then when you go like that, and that's how you keep your hooks. Nice. Yeah, it's, no, <laughs> I like that. Throw it in a bucket, it'll right. Work simple, out. right? Absolutely. Simple. Very and simple. Again, you know, your name and address has to be very plain. Uh, name, uh, name, and the town you live in, and the state you live in. Right on you, the track. You don't have to put your phone number or any of that stuff. Yep. Just name. Uh, so, if you know fishing games coming around, and it's like, oh, uh, so and so, you know, hasn't checked his traps today. Whatever. That's how they know whose traps they are. But that's pretty simple. And if you get a hundred feet of squid line and a piece of uh, whatever. A one ounce weight in a, in a number six hook, you've got a cusk rig. And you know, very inexpensive. And a rubber band. Like and a rubber band. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not expensive to get into. And the good thing is you can set them out at night, work all day, come home at the end of the day, run out and check your cusk lines, and you can pull up fish. Uh, if you don't have time to ice fish all day, which a lot of us don't, um, it's a good way to, you know, put some fish in the freezer or make a chowder without you know, having to take the day off to go fishing.